All right, good morning. It's Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. We have a new tropical storm out in the Caribbean Sea. I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford just getting you the latest on what's happening out there in the Caribbean. The big thing for the Gulf Coast, our New Orleans, where we're based, area and other spots along the Gulf Coast. We're not expecting this to come near us, but I did want to point out, of course, where it is in the Caribbean Sea. Not forecast to move all that much more to the west, but you can see the center has now uh, been found by the National Hurricane Center. They were saying early this morning it's looking a lot better. It's looking pretty healthy and organized, but still the center is still uh, seems to be somewhat exposed, although you can see a little bit of this cloud cover starting to wrap around most of the higher cloud tops and rain with this system still off to the east of the center. Here is the National Hurricane Center forecast cone going out into the weekend. You can see it remains a tropical storm, but likely slowly strengthening and it's not moving that much. In fact, when you see a five day forecast cone, normally this is can cover a lot of territory out here in the Atlantic Basin, but this one is going to be so slow moving. It starts to take this almost kind of circular shape for the cone. So tropical storm probably just slowly strengthening, as I said, because there are warm waters here over the Caribbean Sea. It looks like by this weekend it might strengthen and several models are showing that it should strengthen into a hurricane. So hopefully a lower end hurricane because by this point it may have drifted northward enough. Now the movement could be very erratic because models are kind of in different uh, spots with the exact drift of this system because big steering is not really helping it move one way really strongly or another. But it does look like by the end of the week it might have moved northward enough to possibly bring some rain or uh, wind impacts to Jamaica, perhaps to Haiti, parts of Cuba, maybe even the Dominican Republic if it does indeed nudge to the north. Now, as we look at our tropical models, I've been showing you these for a while. Most are in consensus. And again, this is just a newly formed system. So not a surprise to see a big spread in the model guidance, but most are keeping it really, really slowly moving out here in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. And most are actually bringing it out to the north. So that's why you saw that northward movement with that National Hurricane Center forecast path. A few have it drifting farther to the west, but not very far to the west because of the upper pattern that features a huge ridge of high pressure that's going to keep this confined way out to the east and southeast of the northern Gulf Coast and the New Orleans area. So looking all the way ahead to this weekend, this is our Sunday forecast. Here's the big ridge of high pressure and here is Melissa. Whether it's a stronger system, a stronger tropical storm, a low end hurricane category one, we will see. But it does look like this general spot around the island of Hispaniola, possibly on the outskirts of Puerto Rico, might be uh, where the system is by this weekend. But again, it's early in the game and it doesn't look like it will be moving at all to the west or getting anywhere toward the Gulf of Mexico and or Gulf of America. But it does look like it will be probably drifting uh, here and there for a little while and not moving all that much as it stays out over the Caribbean Sea over the next few days with probably a general movement to the north after that. Melissa does take us to 13 named storms this far in the season. The average is 12, so it takes us to just above average when you're just looking at named storms. We've had four hurricanes. If Melissa becomes a hurricane, that would tick up to five. The average at this point in the season is actually six major hurricanes. We've had three at this point in the season. It's two, but normally we do add a third to that before the season is over and even before the month of October is over. Just when you look at the average numbers for the Atlantic Basin. One thing besides just number of storms, which tells you something about the season, but not everything about the season. Another thing we talk about is the ACE accumulated cyclone energy. So that's a number uh, that is taken from the number of storms, but also how big they get and how long they last. So that's an average uh, look of, or excuse me, that's an accumulated kind of look at the energy with these systems. We're at about 88% of normal at this point in the hurricane season, the Atlantic season. So we're just below average when you look at the actual energy associated with these storms but just above average when you look at named storms. Looking at our list, by the way, this has taken us all the way to Melissa. Uh, Lorenzo and Karen weren't very long-lived storms. Next would be Nestor and then Olga, 
Pablo and Rebecca. So we will see, but we've made it to that 13 for the number of named storms. We will keep our eye on Melissa, but for the northern Gulf Coast, New Orleans, um, it doesn't look like this will have any effect. Now, if you are traveling to the Caribbean, if you're going somewhere around Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, or somewhere uh, even toward Puerto Rico, you'll want to keep your eye on Melissa because it does look like it will be a slowly strengthening, but strengthening system with potential rain and wind impacts and maybe even some flooding concerns uh, as the week takes shape and we get toward the end of the week and the upcoming weekend. So Melissa, something to watch for those of you around the Caribbean, especially those islands I just mentioned. But for the US right now, the mainland, including Florida, we don't expect uh, impacts from that. But Puerto Rico, you'll want to keep your eye on it as it may drift close uh, to your island, possibly at the end of this week or this coming weekend. So again, 2025 hurricane season. We just have six weeks of it left now, and we are getting toward the end of the season. It finally ends on November 30th officially. But for us in the New Orleans area, we typically see a big decline in activity really starting mid October and all the way into November. It's not unheard of to have an October storm, but we really don't expect that as we get through uh, the next couple of weeks. And then after that, we're into November. So in New Orleans, things looking quieter. As we check out what else to expect in the Atlantic Basin, we're not really expecting a whole lot at this point. The one spot that we really were watching was that uh, system that's now become Melissa. So just tracking back to a graphic uh, from early this morning, it had been given a 90% chance of development. And just to look quickly again at that structure of the system, uh, it has a while to go before it will be really fully formed and starting to organize and getting into a pattern where it's able to get its wind speeds up. So you saw that slow strengthening, and this was the general area for its potential formation. Uh, it has formed as of Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. So going back really quickly. This is Tropical Storm Melissa. I'll give you one more look at its forecast path from the National Hurricane Center. Just gently drifting off to the west first just a little bit and then rounding out to the north and they have a sort of somewhat erratic but not really a hugely uh, erratic path for it. And again that circular shape indicating the really slow movement with nothing really driving it one way or the other just yet. But again for our part of the US around New Orleans and the rest of the Gulf Gulf Coast, that big blocking high will be a big feature in keeping this well to the southeast of our area. That'll do it for our tropical weather impact on this Tuesday morning. Stay with WWL and WWL Plus for more.